Hi everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. We're gonna continue revising the idea of the sigma and pi bonds using the example of nitrogen and 2. Because that was indeed a complicated idea, so we gotta go about it again. Nitrogen has 7 electrons, its atomic number is 7, so the configuration becomes 1s2, 2s2, 2px1, 2py1, and 2pz1 because they follow the Huns rule where each degenerate p orbital has only one unpaired electron. They have three unpaired electrons in three perpendicular p orbitals. px, py on the y-axis and then pz on the z-axis are all three perpendicular to each other at an angle of 90 degrees. These are the degenerate p orbitals. So both the, nitrogen both the nitrogen atoms have these sets of these orbitals, px, py, and pz on their x-axis, y-axis, and the pz on the z-axis. As we just showed that they have one electron each in these p orbitals, it means all these orbitals want to make an overlap to create a covalent bond. But you can notice that it is possible only for the px because they are right in front of each other where they can come closer and they can bump into each other to create a sigma bond by the head-on overlap. This way, the sigma bond is formed. Now the py orbitals can create a pi bond by doing a sideways overlap where the electron density is spreaded above and below the sigma bond. Py does it because the py orbitals can't do a sigma bonding or head-on overlap. So the electron density gets spreaded above and below the sigma bond. The py orbitals were parallel. That is why they wanted to go for pi bonding. Similar is the case with the pz orbitals because they are also both parallel to each other. So they can also create a pi bond represented here by the purple shade where the electron density is above and behind the sigma bond on the z-plane. You can see that sigma bond is a very straight and very directional region present on the internuclear axis while the py pi bond is spreaded above and below the sigma bond. The purple region or you can say the pi bond on the z-plane is behind and above or you can say like in front of the sigma bond. We have one sigma bond represented by the pink region. We have one pi bond formed by the py orbitals. This is the first pi bond by the way. It is on the y plane. And then we have another pi bond, second pi bond you can say, formed on the z plane, formed by the pz orbitals. So it's one sigma and two pi's. It's a total of three bonds. Now let's move to another topic of AS level chemistry within the same chapter. That is the shapes and geometry of molecules. So we are going to be talking about simple covalent molecules especially. And we're going to see how their shapes and their geometry look like. So we are going to be focusing on some important points. The first is that molecules that contain three or more than three atoms, they have different specific shapes. The second point is that these shapes are formed around the central atom. Now the central atom is the one which makes the most number of covalent bonds within the molecule. It is mostly an element of group four or group five. These shapes are influenced by the sigma bond pairs because sigma bond pairs are the main ones which are directional and by the way electron pairs are negatively charged obviously so they repel each other. Lone pairs also affect them. We have two models to explain the shape of the molecules. The first one is valence shell electron pair repulsion model or we can simply call it Vesper model. We write it V S E P R, but we just say, we just call it Vesper model. 
while the other model that we'll talk about in the upcoming videos is the hybridization model. Both models overlap a lot, but we're going to be focusing on first valence shell electron pair repulsion model. The name gives us already an idea and we'll see how we imply this idea to predict the shapes of molecules. So yeah, let me correct it. VSEPR. This model also has its key points. The first says that the central atom, which is obviously the one which makes the most number of covalent bonds, generally group four and group five make four and three bonds respectively. So the central atom is the one which makes the most number of covalent bonds and each bond, generally a sigma bond, is an electron bond pair. This electron pair is negatively charged and it is spreaded around the central atom. So negative charge density, for example, let's, let's just take an example of ammonia, NH3. It has three bonds with three hydrogen atoms. Each bond is actually a bond pair, which is an electron density. And all these electron density regions are negatively charged. So the electron pairs, because they're negatively charged, they repel each other. So the electron pairs are around the central atom and they are going to cause a repulsion around the central atom. The fourth point says the electron pairs, the electron pairs move apart due to the repulsion and by moving apart they try to go as far as possible from each other to certain angles where the repulsion is minimum it is all because of the same charge repulsion caused by different electron pairs around the central atom the last point is if the central atom has its lone pair which means unbonded electron pair, generally group five and group six elements have their lone pairs. So if the central atom has lone pairs, then it would also cause repulsion and lone pairs have more repulsion than bond pairs. Let's take an example of boron trifluoride BF3, where the boron atom makes three bonds, so it's the central one with three valence electrons in the outermost shell. The three fluorine atoms try to make their bonds with boron atom by making single covalent bond each. When you notice the geometry of this molecule, it is a planar molecule where all the four atoms are on the same plane. They are on the same sheet of plane and that is why we call these atoms as planar. The shape is known as trigonal planar because there are three corners of this molecule and all the corners lie on the same plane. These three atoms have their bonds 120 degree apart from each other because these, these atoms like specifically are on a triangular structure. Let's talk the example of carbon dioxide CO2 where carbon has a configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2px1 and 2py1. Oxygen on the other hand has 8 electrons so the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2px2, 2py1 and 2pz1. The other oxygen atom also has the same configuration. Carbon becomes an excited atom by giving one of its s electron to the pz so the configuration has now four unpaired electrons each oxygen has two unpaired electrons in the py and pz while carbon has four unpaired electrons so carbon has the capacity to make four bonds with two oxygen atoms around each side they make one sigma and one pi bond with each oxygen atom these three atoms lie in the same line 
and they are all planar. So these three atoms make a linear structure which is in the same line. So they have an angle of 180 degree between the atoms and all these three atoms are planar which means they also lie on the same sheet of plane. I hope this idea is clear to us for the first two molecules and in the next video we'll talk more about such molecules. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.